Hey guys, it's me, Noah Galutin, here today to teach you how to make nachos at home. So now, instead of eating a big pile of garbagey nachos at some trashy bar, you can do it at home, alone, or, you know, with friends if you have those. Well, the first thing you want to do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Let's make the accoutrements for our nachos. I'm going to teach you how to make fresh pico de gallo and fresh guacamole. Since using tomatoes, cilantro, onions, and serranos in both the salsa and the guacamole, we can chop all of it up for both recipes right now. So what about three cups of chopped up tomatoes? Basically you want whatever ones are good and ripe and look the best. So you want a decent dice on these. Don't have to go too crazy, but you want them cut up pretty small. They're going to be going onto chips. Throw these guys in here. You're going to want about a one cup of diced white onion. Obviously it depends on the size, but usually about a half an onion will get you a cup chopped up. All right, now we can chop up our cilantro. We want about a half cup. We'll try to avoid the big thick stem. Other than that, don't worry too much. The stems have a lot of flavor, so feel free to chop those up too. Toss that right in. All right, now let's take one serrano chili. You can use more or less if you want it more or less spicy. You want to give it a pretty fine chop on these because you want it to incorporate into all the bites. Again, just drop those serranos right in there. Now take some salt, you're gonna season this to taste. And then sometimes it's good to add a little extra acidity to your salsa. Just take like a half a lime like this and squeeze it right in. Mix it together. Really simple, just a few ingredients. Now we can set this aside and start making our guacamole. All right, so now we're gonna cut up our avocado, throw it right into the bowl. If you have a molcajete, congratulations, use that. It's great. We don't have one, so we're just gonna mash it up with a fork. All right, so just take this guy, just scoop it right into your bowl. So using three avocados, scooping them all right into your bowl like this. So just get it kind of nice and mashed up like this. It can be a little chunky, but you just want it all, you know, no, just huge amounts of giant avocado chunks. So toss in two tablespoons of white onion. We're gonna toss in a half cup of our chopped tomatoes with their juice, and then about two tablespoons of cilantro. And lastly, of course, our serranos. Now a little bit of salt. And let's stir it up to combine. So now while you're making the rest of your nachos, you want to keep your guacamole from turning brown. So take one of your avocado pits, throw it right in there, and then take some plastic wrap and just cover it tightly right over the top so there's no air touching the guacamole. Grab your baking sheet and give it a nice light coating of vegetable oil to keep it from sticking. If you have a non-stick spray, that works too. Otherwise, you can just drizzle a little bit like this. Grab a paper towel and just kind of wipe the whole thing down. So for our nachos, we're using some drained black beans, mostly this Monterey Jack shredded cheese here, and a little bit of sharp cheddar for accent. We're gonna throw some pickled jalapenos on our nachos too. So the main goal with picking chips, you don't want super thin, flimsy ones you try to lift it up and the whole thing collapses when you try to grab your nachos. But basically, any chips will work. You wanna make three layers of these nachos so that every chip is touching every ingredient. All right, so first, we'll take some of our black beans. Don't go too crazy, just a little light sprinkling. Then let's take some of our pickled jalapenos. Use as much or as little as you want. You can use none at all. And now for the most important part, your cheese. So use about a third of your cheese for each layers. Try to get an even distribution on all your chips. So each chip will be nice and cheesy and delicious. All right, now it's time for our second layer. Now our third and final layer. All right, so right now these things are almost nachos. All we have to do is throw it in the oven for 20, 25 minutes, and then boom, you got nachos. So over a little color, let's sprinkle some cilantro over the top, grab some of our guacamole. And if you want sour cream, which I think tastes great on nachos, throw that right there. And so now what's awesome about these is you're not getting those crappy big mountain of nachos with just like hot chips in the middle. All the way down, there's cheese melted and gooey in every layer. Let's see how these things are. In case you were wondering, when you melt cheese on the chips, it's delicious. Look, nachos will never be on your list of the healthiest foods in the world, but it's gonna be a lot better than the crappy bar versions they make out there. So let us know if you guys tried these things out at home.